So, I've always wanted to do this video. Today's a good time. There's nothing else to do. <laughs> Uh, I've always wanted to do something on Map and Compass. Got a lot of people asking about it. Um, I teach it part time at a college, uh, Natural Resources Skills, and um, yeah, I, I teach a lot of students at risk. So I, I'm going to do this more in a layman's terms, I guess, or the, the most simplistic way to look at it, because everybody gets so stressed about Map and Compass. First of all, why Map and Compass and not not a GPS? I teach GPSing as well, but I meet, teach Map and Compass first. The main reason. Uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of other reasons like yeah, what if your GPS doesn't work the batteries go whatever But if they know how to use map and compass or you know how you use map and compass first Using a GPS and looking at the manual when you buy one makes so much more sense. So uh, A whole bunch of compasses out there. This is a what I call a forestry compass and the reason why it's got a mirror on it and main reason for the mirror is that you can aim off like this and you actually see the uh, base plate in the mirror. So that gives you more accuracy if you do that. So because that's your directional travel, that's your bullseye. Okay. So that's the main reason for it. You can also use it to check your makeup in the morning. Uh, I use it for shaving when I'm out on a trip. I even uh, operated on myself when I had a tick in my lower anatomy. But that's another story. The reason why I like this compass, a little bit more expensive than what's called an orienteering compass, is that it actually does declination for you. Um, Declination is what overwhelms everybody. So I'm going to try to make this the most simplistic thing before we get into the compass. So how a compass works is basically the gravitational pull in the Earth. The Earth is rotating like this, okay? So it, it works on that. The further you go north and the further you go south, the more crazy the compass goes with the needle, okay? And the more or less accurate it is. You have to uh, compensate for declination. That's what that, the compass is going off because of the gravitational pull. Where do, where do you get declination to? In the old days, you'd have to look at the map and it says it on the map, but the map is old. And then the declination changes every year by degree. So you have to calculate the amount of years the map is, map is and everything else. And this gets very confusing for a lot of people. Right now, you just Google it, okay? So I said, Bridge North, that's where I live. What is the declination right now? And it's 12 degrees west. Changes every year, but right now it's 12 degrees west. So you want true north, not magnetic north, okay? So what the compass is going to do, if you have an orienteering compass with no declination, uh, what's called a declination screw, is that it's going to give you magnetic north, not true north. And you're going to have to do math. And you don't want to do math. So if I had an orienteering compass that had no declination screw in it, I would have to do the math. So what you do is it's 12 degrees west. West is best, east is least. So if you had 30 degrees and you wanted to compensate for declination, you would have to add that 12 degrees. If it was uh, 12 degrees east, you would have to subtract it. So every time you actually got a heading, you'd have to compensate for that and do some math. I don't like doing math. I wasn't very good in math <laughs> in school. So this actually has a declination screw on it. They're, they're everywhere on different compasses, but usually on a compass like this, you'll have a declination screw like this, or sorry, a screwdriver. And you actually turn this little copper dial and it turns that base of that needle, which is the or or orienteering needle, okay? And you move that 12 degrees west. Not 12 degrees east, make sure you don't do that, 12 degrees west. Once that's set, you don't have to do math. It does it for you. So that's why I like it comes like this. A little bit more expensive, but I like it. The other thing is you've got your base plate, your compass housing, okay? This thing that rotates. You've got your orienteering lines, those black lines that are going up and down, and that will mean something when we get into the map. And you've got direction of travel arrow, which is on the top, which is actually the bullseye, so that's the direction of travel arrow at the top. And you got the, the compass needle, which is the floaty red thing, which is always floating north, okay? All right, so if I wanted to find 360 degrees or zero degrees or north, basically, I turn my housing, I turn my housing until 360 degrees is at the top where the direction of travel arrow is going because I want to travel the direction of 360 degrees. That's why it's there, okay? Then what you do is I find, instead of doing the bullseye, I find a lot more people are comfortable just putting on their chest like this. When you rotate your body, you want the red floaty arrow to float into the stationary red arrow. So the red goes into the shed, okay? 
so I can't I can't really show you I'll have to put the camera on an angle to show you later but basically you rotate your body not the compass don't do this rotate your body <laughs> oh my lord what am I doing okay I'm rotating my body keeping this flat don't do this don't do this keep it flat reds in the shed that's 360 degrees here's where a lot of people make mistakes you are not traveling where the red floaty arrow is you're traveling in the direction of travel arrow so if i did 40 degrees for example and i rotated my body that red arrow is pointing that way because that's north but 40 degrees is that way okay so that's the direction i want to go so yes red goes into the shed but go in your direction of travel that's how you follow a heading if you want to find a, 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 a heading let's say that tree in my front lawn okay you can't see it but there's a tree in my front lawn so I want to walk to that tree I point the compass direction travel arrow to the tree because that's where I want to go I rotate the housing until the red floats into the red and then it gives me a heading of 240 degrees true north because the declination is already set right so I actually look at 240 degrees and I follow that heading when you're going through the woods and do that, if you're going on a line of sight, let's say you're going 240 degrees for a long distance, go to a tree and say, okay, I see the tree, 240 degrees, close the compass and walk to the tree. Don't walk through the bush like this, okay? That's crazy. When you get to the tree, go behind the tree, do 240 again, oh look, that rock is at 240. Close it, walk to the rock. Continue that through the woods and that's how you go throughout the day. What can go wrong with this? Um, Again, the further north, the further south you go, it's really complexing with the declination, it's way off. So sometimes, you know, GPS is probably better in the far north. Um, the other is uh, it could have a bubble in it and the chemical that's making the, the, the needle float is all wrong. Some compasses I'm finding, because they're not made as well as they used to. My old compass still works really well. This one even ha this one has a problem when it's cold out. It should not. I mean, that's just stupid and they gotta fix that. But, uh, but there's some problems with that, so look for that. And the other is, um, well, let, me see, let me see, um, is not trusting your compass. So if it's working fine, don't trust your own ability. The human cannot know its direction in the woods. If people tell you that, they don't know what they're talking about. Birds can do it. Some animals can do it. They, they migrate. And they know where they're going. Humans can't. And actually, the old story of you going around in a circle, coming back to where you started, is because of the rotation of the earth in your body is leaning that way. So that may, makes sense. Uh, what else could go wrong? What else could go wrong? I'll think about it. There's something else. There's one more thing. I forget. I remembered the other thing really important glad I remembered what else could go wrong is um, if, if there's any metal around you metal actually makes the compass go all weird too a hydro line above you not good uh, electric fence um, or barbed wire fence a pencil I've seen uh, uh, make this all go screwy <laughs> I gotta tell you the funniest story was a student of mine amazing student knew what he was doing kept on getting lost didn't know why and he had the compass to his chest like this and he's doing everything right and I said do you have any metal on you at all and he goes well my whole entire chest is metal because I was in a motorcycle accident <laughs> yeah that would do it which is really a problem when you're actually middle age and you don't have a Corvette so you just have sort of metal chains around you like necklaces and stuff like that you know not that I would do that but that's not a good idea